Have you ever thought what's the real deal when it comes to old money versus new money? Stick with me to the end of this video to find out because there's more to old versus new than meets the eye. On old money aesthetic today, you'll see the difference between both. Sure, you've heard folks yap about it, but do you know that over 70% of billionaires are new money and just 30% inherit? Yeah. So you're at a fancy party observing mingling guests, right? There's classy old money dudes on one side and recent success sparkles on the other. But how can you tell who's who? By the time we wrap it up, you'll be able to spot the difference between the old and the new like a pro. Number one, wealth source. Look at it like comparing a classic aged wine to a freshly popped bottle of champagne. Both are delightful, but with their distinct flair. Old money families like the Rockefellers, the Vanderbilts, and Waltons have been swimming in cash for ages. They exude class like a fancy ballroom dance, and with a capital U for the upper class. Like an heirloom, their wealth is bequeathed through wills, estates, and trusts, securing a place amongst society's elites for generations. Take Sam Walton, for example. His family inherited a staggering $23 billion that could astound even Scrooge McDuck. Let's focus on the new money crew in the meanwhile. These millionaires and billionaire folks who made it alone had to work hard to get their money. So, rung by rung, they ascended the success ladder. Well, they may be a step below old money in the social status hierarchy, but hey, they're still rolling in dough, right? You'll often find the new money gang in sports, entertainment, or technology fields. People like Musk or Zuckerberg or Rihanna. They've hit the jackpot and aren't afraid to show it off. They could buy a swan-shaped yacht or mansion with a moat guarded by a croc or maybe get a fashion line. And speaking of fashion lines, that brings us to number two, clothing lines. New Money loves flaunting those unmistakable labels on their clothes, like Gucci's interlocking G-print or Chanel's double C's. They're the trendsetters, eager to try the new fashion experiments and follow the latest crazes. Colors are their playground, embracing vibrant patterns, neon hues, and more. On the other hand, old money has a refined taste for jewelry. Not always glitzy or expensive, but steeped in family heritage or exclusivity. They sort of prefer timeless pieces like a Chanel tweed jacket or well-crafted cardigans. Their style exudes posh elegance with neutral tones, conservative cuts, and demure necklines. It's a classic, sophisticated approach that whispers grace rather than shouting for attention. But it's not just the clothing that speaks volumes, there's also... Number three, lifestyle. Well, it's not just about how many generations your wealth has been passed down, it's a whole lifestyle. Old money folks have this knack for gathering together in certain fancy regions of the country. You'll find them sipping martinis in Martha's Vineyard or lounging in their Hampton mansions. Meanwhile, new money enthusiasts are all about that West Coast vibe. They're the ones sporting sunglasses, surfing, and trying to convince everyone that avocado toast is life. Now here's the thing, old money people have this aura about them. It's like they have a secret handshake or something. You can't fake being one of them, trust me. They have this natural air of education, refinement, and respectability. They don't even have to try. They just exude it effortlessly while we struggle to match our socks. On the other hand, new money families have a different story to tell. They started from the bottom, now they're up there. And even though their bank accounts might rival those of old money, they don't always get the same upper-class status. It's like being the new school kid and not fitting in with the popular crowd. The upper crust sometimes sniffs at them like, hey, you might have the cash, but you got the class, the values, ouch, right? Number four, values. Speaking of values, old money individuals are all about family traditions and values, like to an extreme level. They're the ones who would skip their desires to fulfill their role within the family. You know the type, they might look like they rolled out of a dumpster, but they own a massive yacht that could fit a small army. They're surprisingly chill customers though, rarely complain and they understand that even the fanciest folks make mistakes sometimes. On the other side of the spectrum, the new money folks value themselves as individuals more than anything. Their motto is, if I want it, I'll have it. They take risks, live by their instincts, and sometimes forget to check their bank balance before swiping their credit card. They're like wild stallions, running free and spending their cash with a carefree attitude. 
well, not all of them though. They trust their judgment more than a collective agreement. And honestly, who needs a rule book when you've got confidence and cash to burn? And that's probably the biggest distinction between them, burning cash. Number five, spending patterns. Old money families are like frugal pros. They've grown up knowing that their money isn't really theirs, but the family's sacred treasure. So, they're all about ensuring wealth sticks around for generations to come. These high rollers may seem like regular folks, but don't be fooled. Their flashy cribs, sleek wheels, and stylish outfits are all strategic moves. They're sly like foxes, turning big buys into smart investments. Surprising, huh? They'll blend in with the regular folks, avoiding the spotlight. They might mingle at high-class events or dabble in fancy hobbies like polo or sailing, because why not? It's the sophisticated way to show off without screaming, look at me, I'm loaded. The new money guys have a completely different perspective on their bank accounts. They see it as their personal jackpot, ready to spend and flaunt. Fancy mansions? Check. Flashy cars? Double check. And let's be real here, this isn't breaking news. We've all heard the tales of athletes and celebs who went from grass to grace, only to blow it all faster than a cheater on Red Bull. We're talking about folks like Mike Tyson and Nicolas Cage. I mean, Mike Tyson was dropping a cool $400,000 every month. Maybe it was all for fun or leisure, as they say in old money terms. Number six, leisure. You know those old money folks sure know how to plan their leisure time down to the tiniest detail. You'll find them gracefully sipping champagne at fancy dinners and expertly hosting lavish events as if it's just another day in their glamorous lives. It's like they have a PhD in leisure. When it comes to hobbies, old money takes it to a whole new level of extravagance. They adore those jaw-droppingly expensive hobbies that we average folks can only dream about. I'm talking about dressage, where horses dance like they're in a Broadway musical, or boat like the kings and queens of the sea. These hobbies are like elite club memberships with a ridiculously high price tag, making them the exclusive playgrounds of the super wealthy. On the other hand, new money families are a bit more laid back regarding their leisure time. Once they hit it big, they might indulge in their existing interests, but with a brand new level of luxury. Suddenly, they're buying cars that could rival a spaceship or gadgets that could make James Bond jealous. It's like they're living out their childhood fantasies, except now their piggy banks are bigger than ever. So tell me, what else pops into your mind when we talk about the clash of old versus new money? What other stuff do you think I could add to the list? As always, I'll read them in the comments.